I'm Dr. Ryan DeBell from The Movement Fix. This is Movement Fix Monday. What I want to talk to you guys about this week is one of the most common ways that people warm up their legs for either running, squatting, deadlifting, as sort of a general warm up, and that is the leg swing. Now, in my mind, when I think about doing a leg swing, I'm thinking about warming up the hip, and I hope that's what you're thinking about too. When people do leg swings, one of the most common mistakes that happens is they're not really swinging at the hip, they're swinging, sort of doing this middle of the lumbar spine swing. And let me show you on the spinal model what I mean by that. So we have a spine and we have a hip socket. And on the, uh, during the leg swing, we want the, imagine this is the femur and this is the ball of the ball and socket joint of the hip. We want the motion to be happening at the hip joint. So if you're standing here, you're grabbing onto the pole, you're swinging your leg around. Ideally what's happening is that your leg is rotating like this forward and backward and the motion is happening at this ball and socket joint. Unfortunately, a lot of times, that's not what happens. Instead of swinging using this joint, people use the lumbar spine. And so what it looks like is, sure, on the global large scale, when you just look at it, it's just kind of surface level, it's like, wow, their leg is swinging really far. But we have to see what are the joints that are contributing to that. And a lot of times it's this low back. So when the leg swings backward, the, the lumbar spine arches like this. And when the leg swings forward, the, lum the low back rounds like this. Now, there may be a time and a place for that, but if I'm thinking about prepping for running, lifting, etc., I want to disassociate the movement of the low back from the hip. So a common uh, topic that I talk about is movement disassociation or differentiation, however you want to say it. You're differentiating or disassociating hip movement from low back movement. That lets us use the ball and socket joint, which anatomically accommodates more motion over uh, repetitions and lets the low back be a more solid foundation point for running and for squatting, etc. Because when you run and squat, you don't want this to be moving all over the place. So why do you want to prep it moving all over the place in a leg swing? It doesn't make sense. So on the global scale, what this looks like, this is, what, this is kind of what a lot of people will do because we're doing leg swings. We're not really thinking about the details is They'll swing back like this and they'll sort, of, they'll sort of arch and then they'll round and they'll arch and they'll round. And you see a lot of motion is happening through the low back versus if I just do it at the hip and I'm gonna take my hand and put it on my low back so I can feel what's going on there. I shouldn't feel rounding into my fingertips. I shouldn't feel arching into my fingertips. I should have just motion purely at the hip and it's gonna look like I'm going less distance versus if I go like this, it looks, it looks like I'm going a lot farther, which a lot of people will think is desirable to go as far as you can. But if I'm just rotating around the hip joint as much as I can, it's gonna look like less, but that's okay. Because now we're getting more hip, less low back, it's priming us for the activity that we're actually trying to do. So using your own hand is a great way to get feedback to make sure you're getting the movement where you want it. What I also think though is that, it's, yes, it's important how far you can swing the leg, but it's also important that you can control the full range of motion. And so, for example, one thing that I'll do is I'll go really slow. So I'll, I'll take my leg back like this, and then I'll try to bring it up as far as I can without rounding the back, just to learn what does it feel like to just use the hip joint as much as possible. Now when I come back like this, I'm thinking about kind of squeezing my butt, but I'm also thinking about squeezing my abs which will help prevent this arching thing. So I'm squeezing here. When I come forward, I'm trying to use kind of this stuff versus crunching and using the low back to get up there. As you are able to control this range better under your own control and you could stop at any position, then you can start adding a little bit of speed to it and then that translates into a better warm up and a better way to use the hip instead of cranking through the low back to translate over to the activity you're trying to do. A lot of times when people go running, they'll get a really stiff back. And if they can't do a leg swing and disassociate the hip from the low back motion, that's something that we have to do. Now, over the next couple of months, we're gonna look at some detailed uh, running drills and kind of some points of performance. And you have to have this leg swing and disassociation of hip to spine before we can go into any more depth. That's what I got for you guys for this week on Move It Fix Monday. Hey, if you don't already like the uh, Facebook page, make sure you go to facebook.com slash The Movement Fix and follow me there. I'm also on Instagram at The Movement Fix, so make sure you go there to get updates. And then you gotta get subscribed to the YouTube channel to get the videos delivered to you every week. I'll see you guys next week.